restart the recording. Okay, so now we are at the second module, which is connecting to Triton, or whatever cluster you may have. So the traditional way of interacting with a cluster is via a terminal, which is why we had the Linux shell crash course Friday. And secure shell or SSH is the most common way of doing that, which will work on almost any cluster. Some clusters have their own ways of getting a terminal. Um, for example, maybe either Jupyter or virtual desktops or things like that. But anyway, you're going to get there somehow. So if you are not at Alto, this will be different. So there'll at least be a different host name you need to connect to in order to, um, to get access. You'll need to look at your own information for this. There might be some other different hops you have to go through for security. At Alto, your account needs to be activated for Triton. So it's the same account as the normal Alto account but we need to set it up for connecting to the cluster. So hopefully you've already done that by now, because if you haven't, it will be a little bit too late. Um, let's... Just a quick, uh, by the way, I mentioned uh, that we forgot to, at the start that in the Zoom meeting that Enrico is hosting, there's probably going to be uh, help available. Like if you have problems connecting and stuff like that, then you can ask there and, uh, uh, and Enrico will figure out how to, how to solve the problem. So if you encounter some connection problems or something like that, you can't access the cluster right now, then uh, let Enrico know. Yeah. Okay, um, should we give a quick demonstration on the connection just to make sure everyone's on the same page and have a demo? So our general plan here is we'll demonstrate what to do and then we'll have a break where you can go to the Zoom hmm. meeting and then you can get hands-on help if needed. And you can talk about the different local sites and things like that. Um, yeah. yeah, just to, like I added that uh, the reason for these hops and skips and jumps uh, is, is that uh, like this secure shell, even though it's secure, uh, mm -hmm. we don't want to reveal the whole cluster interface to the wider uh, internet. So that's why you have to come into the Alto network so that you can access Triton. Uh, from VPN, I think, I'm not completely certain, does it work out of the box that you can, from the VPN connect to Triton uh, if you are, connected to the VPN network, but at least from the jump hosts like Delta and so forth, you can access uh, Triton. So basically you have to go through some other machine in order to get to the other network before you can access Triton. Yes. Okay, so Simo, would you like to demonstrate connecting or should I? Um, maybe you should, yeah. because I think I have so many custom variables <laughs> that I might not have get the yeah. user experience. Okay, so here we go. This is a shell on my own computer. And in order to connect from outside the Alto network, first we have to go through a particular host, which is kosh.alto.v. So I'll SSH to kosh.alto.v, but I need to give my username. Like this. So I think this will work. So I have hidden my existing, I've removed my existing SSH configuration. So we see it's requesting, um, it wants to verify a key fingerprint. So I type yes here, which means that it will store the identity of Kosh. And every time I connect in the future, it will be sure that I'm connecting to the same computer, which is good for security. So what most people will do is say yes once when they're on a secure network and then when they're traveling or something, they can know they are safe. So I type my password. And... Hmm. Hmm. 
hmm, what is going wrong here? Am I typing my password wrong? I hope I don't get myself locked out of the machine. Hmm. I hope you're enjoying the demo effect here. Seem what might be good if you're prepared yeah, to I might try. do this as yeah, an I'll, emergency. Yeah, I'll just uh, move my SSH folders to another place. Yeah, if you can share my screen, then okay. Show my screen then. As you can see, we're doing this live. Yeah. Yeah. So here is the here is my terminal, and let's let's try try same thing as Richard. So let's go to push dot alt dot um, Yeah, I got a better better yeah, access. There we go. Don't know what happened. But yeah, so now I'm at Kosh, but this is not yet part of Triton. So this is Altos, Alto ITs. Uh, so you can see all the university IT services over here. So it means that it's Alto IT that uh, has this uh, server under their control. So in order to get to Triton, we need to take another leap. So to triton.alto.fi. And now it asks for the fingerprint. I say yes. And uh, well, I uh, I uh, have the settings so that it automatically allows me to connect there. But but in your case, it would ask for a password. But mm -hmm. when when you type the alto password to the to to the question uh, password question, you should get to this uh, system and you should see this beautiful ASCII art that we have. And and now you're in Triton. Like after you have taken these two leaps, you're in Triton and you're you're here, and yeah, they are, yeah, yeah. And there is fancier ways of doing this as well. So technically, doing a SSH hop um, and then typing your password in again on the other computer isn't the best for security. But if you read through our hints here, you can see some more ideas for example this dash j option um yes and you can also set up your like the, we have tutorial on how to set up the uh how to set up an ssh key so that you don't have to type your password uh or every time you make a connection but it will use this key that's been open for a certain amount of time so basically once you log into your computer you open this key and then you connect to Triton and then it's you can keep it open for hours and and after you finish your work it will close the key and yeah you don't anymore have to like you don't have to type your password over and over again yeah so if you're on Mac SSH is installed by default same as Linux if you're on Windows yeah. there's different options and we went over some of these in the connection session Friday um Putty is a common program to use to get the SSH connection. Um, let's see. Yeah, so so yeah. here are a few examples on how you can do the connection. So you can you can use this jump host to to tell the uh, shell to do a jump through one of the hosts, and then. Uh, well, in in Mac you can use the SSH. Uh, in Windows, like Richard said, the party is is a good yeah. thing. And over here we have uh, links to documentation on how to do these advanced SSH options. Yeah. So that you don't have to write these. Yeah. I guess I'd strongly recommend you make a SSH key that can be used to log in 
without a password, and that would save you from the problem I just had of typing my password wrong three times and getting locked out. SSH is a super yes. advanced program that can take its own hour-long course someday, but anyway, um, let's see. So once you're connected, yeah. there's some things to do. Yeah, so can... One, two, second. we yeah. can change your shell to bash, which shouldn't be needed yes. anymore. Um, if you type echo dollar shell, it should say bin bash. So what is this shell? Can you yeah. describe so it? The shell is basically the thing that does the interaction with the operating system. So we went over Bash a bit more on Friday, but there's different options besides Bash. And it used to be before 2018, the default shell at Alto was ZSH, which is more powerful, but had some slight, slight quirks and some things didn't quite work out of the box with it. And to, well, to make things a bit more standard, we recommended people change things to Bash. So if your account is not older than 2018, this will already be um, what we see here. Um, okay. So there's other options for connecting to Triton. For example, you can use jupyter.triton.alto.fi to get a shell connection, or you can use the virtual desktops vdi.alto.fi to log in and then use SSH from there. But I think we don't really need to go into these right now. So I think hmm. now is a time to go to the breakout sessions. So what should you do right now? So we'll have a maybe 10 minute break to let things get going. And um, you can go to your respective Zoom sessions. And here's what we would like you to do. Um, let's see. I will put this in the bottom of HackMD. So let's see. Um, hands on session. So connect to the cluster um, and verify your shell. So this will be a little bit annoying to some people because some people may need to a little bit more time here and most of you have probably already done this but anyway we need an opportunity for you to investigate what happens at your local sites so let's take a should we take a how long of a break do you think is good um maybe 10 minutes 10 minute break yes yeah so oh, maybe at, at uh 15 to 1 like it's almost <laughs> like that's probably the yeah. better time so 30 minute break 13 okay but uh just just for for the users if you uh well uh, are first time using hpc resources and you think that okay this shell thing looks pretty scary so do i need to s start learning matrix like reading code that's dropping next uh that's not uh the whole like reality but learning shell is very important because that's a very uh helpful tool to to get access to the to the cluster and work with cert certain workflows so many things you can do on other ways as well like richard mentioned vdi the uh jupyter notebook but it's good idea to to get accustomed to the idea of taking a shell connection to triton because that in many cases that's the best way of working there yeah so don't don't let it be a, a like a, bar a barrier of entry okay so let's send you to the zoom and we'll combine this with a general break um and continue so I just saw something here. So if you can't get into the cluster, what should you do? So at Alto, you can ask directly in the Zoom. 
if you're at another university, you need to find whatever support email is there or chat thing. Um, yes. Um, we'll, we can answer more questions in the hack and So yeah, let's go to the break. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 